I can't talk about capnography without talking about entitled capnography, all right, or waveform capnography. So one thing I always, always, always point out when talking about respiratory patients is, hey, man, there's certain vital signs that I need to have on a patient that has respiratory distress. And one of the first things that we're always going to put on a patient is a non-intubated entitled capnography. Looks like uh, nasal cannula has a little thing sticking out of the bottom probe, and it reads uh, capnography levels, right? Now, we know normal capnography is 35 to 45. We know that's considered normal, okay? 35 to 45 is considered normal. And if we look at these entitled capnography waveforms, we can see where these numbers are, right? It's over here on this left side, we have zero and it's showing the number 37 because that looks like that's where that waveform starts that to, to plateau, but it's probably a little bit more than that. So it's probably in the four, like 40 ish is that end title because the end title is where this tallest peak of that actual waveform is. So the tallest peak where that waveform is hitting is considered the end tidal capnography. All right. Now, with regards to waveform and what I'm looking at here, I can actually see how this patient's breathing, right? I don't just throw slap on a, an O2 saturation and say, yeah, this guy's breathing great, right? Uh, or I can't just always look at a patient and say, hmm, yeah, they're Sometimes it's easy to look at somebody and say, yeah, they're breathing really fast, but are they breathing adequate? Uh, Inside of capnography plays a huge role in our assessment to kind of make that determination. So this top one up here, this is considered normal. All right, that's a normal inside of capnography. Nice looking plateaus, uh, evens out, right? And there's something also that I want you to understand with these waveform capnographies. First thing I want to point out is how to read it. When you take an inhalation, I breathe in, there's a sharp downward stroke on your waveform. When I exhale, it breathes out, all right? So it goes up, and then once I exhale, it prolonged. And then I take a breath in and it comes right back down. This shows me my IE ratio. So if you remember that, IE ratio. All right. IE ratio is telling me my inspiration to exhalation ratio. Okay. Normal IE ratio is one to two. My inhalation, which again is this mark to basically here, right? I inhale, my exhalation should be twice as long, right? This little plateau here at the bottom, that's our dead space time that we are basically uh, waiting to breathe again. And then we exhale all of that carbon dioxide, okay? Um, so IE ratio should be one to two. That's a normal IE ratio. If you look at this one, number two here, number two, we have a prolonged exhalation. So we see this very short inhalation here, but this really prolonged exhalation. This is more of an IA ratio of one to four. Could be even greater, okay? If you see this prolonged expiration, this is considered a lower airway obstruction. All right, lower airway obstruction, COPD, uh, patients with asthma, anaphylaxis, right? I'm expecting to hear wheezing by just looking at this person's entitled capnography, okay? The waveform gives it away. They call it sometimes uh, a shark fin, see? And you can kind of see it here, where it's this sharp downward slope directly off of that, uh, entitled capnography waveform. So pay attention. And sometimes you'll even have providers listen to long sounds and they think they hear something, but then when you look at the entitled capnography and you see something completely different, pay attention to this entitled capnography. 
All right. It's not lying to you. Get somebody else's ears on that chest and, and really listen. Because are you listening to rails or are you listening to wheezing? Both are going to look completely different on your internal capnography. This next one, number three, we're looking at somebody that is tachypneic. Obvious tachypneic, right? Somebody who's breathing really fast at a fast rate. Um, they have what appears to be a low in tidal capnography. I wonder why, because they're breathing right off really fast. And look at our IE ratio, inhalation to exhalation. This is about a one to one. Very short plateaus. Typically, when you see very short plateaus on your in tidal capnography, we're talking about somebody with pulmonary edema, okay? Our CHFers. These patients, we need to catch that early. We need to get long sounds on them uh, and start treating that, uh, figuring out that we need to use probably CPAP over any sort of pharmacology uh, right off the get-go. This last one down here, number four, we have a patient that has extremely high intidal capnography. So if you see 50, should be right here. This patient's intidal capnography is like 70, okay? Now, again, what can cause high intidal capnographies? Hypoventilation, all right? And obviously in this one in particular, bradypnea. This guy is not only, or patient, is not only breathing slowly, but not breathing enough, right? They're breathing shallow, slow and shallow. Um, and you can tell by the sensible capnography, this patient, you would have to bag this patient uh, to get their entitled back to normal. Okay. So this patient needs respiratory help. Some patients that you get on your monitor or you get in the back of the truck, whatever the case is, and you start looking at them, you can kind of tell if this patient's in respiratory failure. This is a big problem, okay? And this patient needs to be ventilated. But I'm telling you right now, in capnography, waveform is awesome. Use it.